Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Feeling better? Me, I'm not. Certainly not. After this very uh, hurtful and disappointing defeat against Manchester United uh, yesterday, one goal, one nil. To be to be honest with you guys, I, I kind of expected it. Obviously, it's very easy for me to say this after the, the result. But usually in football, you know, when you do not take your chances, and as long as it's nil-nil, there's always a chance for the team who really didn't do nothing special, but they didn't do that badly either. Uh, don't get me wrong, I have absolutely no time for Manchester United. I really don't care about their problems with the manager, their style of play or whatever. It's really none of my business and I really do not fucking care about their problems. But uh, when many people, pundits, fans and whatever, keep going on and saying that uh, they didn't deserve to win or whatever. I, I do not agree with this, you know. They got what they deserved. They, they didn't concede. They have a good goalkeeper, whatever, who made, if you want to say, some good saves. Uh, but I'm more interested about Liverpool, the team that I support, you know. And... The problems that we saw yesterday in the game are not new, you know, uh, it's been ongoing way, way, way long, even before Jurgen Klopp jo joined the club and pointing to the simple blatant fact that we are toothless, absolutely hopeless and toothless in attack and... Uh, absolutely diabolical in defense you know we keep conceding the same goals new manager or not set pieces corners whatever it's always the same debate again and again not concentrating enough not being good enough not being simply not good enough you know at both ends of the field and in midfield also the, 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 the crucial biggest problem, like I've said before, you can go back in my previous videos, uh, we do not score enough goals. It's a simple, simple as, simple as. So no matter how, how well you play, beautiful football, passion, pressing, judge and pressing from Jurgen Klopp, whatever, if you do not take your chances and you do not put the ball in the back of the net, What's the fucking point, you know? So, and also really, really fed up about this thing, being a little bit sorry about ourselves, you know, do, do not get what we deserve once again. We got what we deserve because simply we are not good enough. The, the, we, we, we have a, a 32 million pound striker. I don't know why. We bought him because we absolutely do not play. Whether it's Brendan Rodgers or Jurgen Klopp, we do not have the personal to play to his strengths. That, that is to say, we do not have good wingers. We, we do not have wingers, full stop, except from a young Jordan Ibe. Uh, the crossing ability in the team is poor at best. And uh, like I said... A million times before, you know, I feel a little bit sorry for Benteke. I'm not, I'm not a fan of Christian Benteke, but it's 32 million pound wasted. What about Adam Lalana? A bag of a, a pony trick, a bag bags of skills and whatever, but zero, 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 zero end product. You know, no assists, no goals. Twisting and turning, a twist, twist dancer on the field, you know. Works his socks off, you know, does the pressing thing and all that. But 
at the end of the day, he's an attacking midfielder. An, attack, an attacking midfielder, you expect assists and goals, which he provides none of them, you know. Uh, Firmino, the jury is still out for me, a long way. Fair enough, he scored two wonder goals. Two good goals against uh, Arsenal in midweek, you know. He didn't play badly against Manchester United. He he has the, the, the skills or whatever, but is he good enough? And crucially, is he worth £30 million? The return on investment on Firmino so far is not good enough. Yeah, it's simply not good enough. Even Jordan Henderson, nothing against him. Hard worker, once again has improved massively even under Brendan Rodgers but he's, is he Captain Mateel? Is he... I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure that the, the, the defence also they didn't do badly, don't get me wrong, yesterday uh, I, I thought Mamadou Sako which I'm a huge fan again, once again did well, even the veteran Colo Toure had nothing to be ashamed about. But when, when, when you see the way Jurgen Klopp plays, you know, it's high, in, high intensity, passionate, good pressing and whatever. But you can't keep going at this rate for 90 minutes, 95 minutes or whatever. So when the, the, the crucial moments arrive, you've got to take your chances. And that's not to say that Liverpool didn't get the chances in the game, but it's, not, it's just n nothing about being unlucky or whatever, or even De Gea being world-class. He's a good uh, world-class goalkeeper, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, I think the offensive, if you can call them offensive players of Liverpool, that's simply not good enough, you know, simply not good enough. Full stop. And uh, what's worrying is the amount of huge load of cash. Because do, do not forget, guys, that we got more than hundred million pounds from this. It was a bitter, bitter blow, obviously, to lose the likes of uh, Luis Suarez. I'm not a fan of Ryan Sterling, but we can say it was a blow losing these two players. But we got hundred million pounds. Uh, from this, the sale of these two players. And uh, who could argue with me to say that all this money has been wasted? An absolute waste of money. So it would be easy to say that FSG need to back the new manager with more money. They've, they've spent the money, but at the end of the day, the strategy about all this... And uh, on a side note, also, I obviously listened to Brandon Rogers, who was on Sky Sports 1 on goals on Sunday before the game. It was interesting to say they, there was always, he, 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 how would I say this, uh, <clears throat> expressed his bitterness as politely as possible, as we all know how Brandon Rogers is, but things were clearly. <clears throat> Uh, not working on the on the transfer uh, transfer activity, you know. Obviously, for for me, both parties are wrong. Once again, you know, both the the the, the transfer committee they are not good enough. Like I've said before, they are, they are not scouting the. the uh, you can say that the strategy is all about developing young young players, trying to develop their, their, their potential in young players. But I think a, a, a balancing act is needed in all this. You know, you can't put all your eggs in the same basket, only banking on young potential and especially... Uh, for the bottom line for me at the end of the day, guys, is that all the transfer business for the last three to four years has been an absolutely, an absolute disaster for Liverpool. Simple as, simple as. And uh, some interesting uh, revelations from Brendan Rodgers, whether he's saying the truth or not, we, we'll have to wait and see. We will never know, probably, but I'm not so sure that Jurgen Klopp, and I hope so also, that a manager of the calibre of Jurgen Klopp would accept 
to work in such conditions where you you're imposed a list of players like it or not uh, you have to go with this you know but it's got to do also with this the the cv brandon rogers didn't have the, the cv to hold up to the owners if you see what i mean which is not the case with jürgen klopp obviously but like i've said before so guys it's that the changing the manager is only a first step of probably a hundred more steps needed to get Liverpool where they belong. And the worrying aspect for me is that it, this, this season could quickly, could very rapidly uh, end up in a season to be forgotten, another season wasted, you know, because it's 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 blatantly obvious that we cannot count on Daniel Sturridge and that Liverpool simply need, at the very minimum, another striker capable of producing. But then again, we are in January, it's a question of affordability, availability, I get all this. But it's quite revealing when, uh, after spending more than £50 million on two players, I'm talking about Bentec and Firmino, that you have to put... <coughs> Uh, central defender I'm making reference to Stephen Corker as an emergency striker obviously we have injuries these things happen and uh, we are unlucky but would Danny Ings Divock Origi have made a difference who knows I'm not so sure about this anyway guys massively disappointed obviously and I'm hurting but I, I, I refuse to feel sorry for, 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 for myself as a Liverpool supporter. They are getting what they deserve, you know. They are not good enough, both offensively and defensively. And um, I was kind of, like I said before, I was kind of expecting this, these things to happen, you know. When you do not take your chances, what's the point of playing well, showing the passion and all this? But at the end of the day... Referring to Manchester United, no matter how how bad you play or whatever, as long as it's still nil nil, you still got a chance, and you could you could sense it that the, the the game would have ended this way, you know. So me, I would the, the top four. Although it's it's not finished, it's not finished. Was was still eight points. It's a three point three game gap. If you, if you you want to put it bluntly, three game gap between Spurs and ourselves, and uh, the league, the English league, has been very inconsistent for all the twenty clubs this season. We, we, there's still hope, as long as there's still hope, we, we must still fight. But let me know your thoughts in the comment sections. What do you think? is the better chance for Liverpool to try to get Champions League next season. The Europa League or the league? At the moment, it's looking as though it's the Europa League. And that's not to say that the Europa League will be easy to win. Far from it, very far from it. Especially if we do not, at the very minimum, get a striker. I hope that the rumours about Shane Long are only just this. Rumours? Uh, although the, the Stephen Corker signing is not bothering me that much in the sense that it's just a loan deal, emergency deal. But sh signing Shane Long for £8 million, pounds, that's what the newspapers have been saying yesterday. I think we've had our fair share of signing uh, ineffective players. For ridiculous prices, haven't we? Let me know your thoughts, guys. I leave you there. Uh, I don't know what Jurgen Klopp will do for the game against Exeter uh, this Wednesday. Not very confident, but hoping that we 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 get through. I love the FA Cup. I want Liverpool to win trophies. Also, don't get me wrong, guys. I don't get this this thing about uh, having to prioritize. And in this case. What would you prioritize at the moment? Well, guys, I leave you there. This was just a quick catch up. Let me know your thoughts about the game. Not much to say about the game. Uh, same old story, I would say, you know. 
playing good football or whatever, but absolutely no end product and an unre unreliable defense. Uh, I'll leave you there, guys. Uh, although it's uh, more than 24 hours after this defeat, losing against Manchester United always hurts. But fair play. Uh, they've done it. They, uh, with Van Gaal for a manager under pressure has a very, very good record against Liverpool. So you have to admit it, guys. Anyway, leave you there once again. Take care. Please comment, please like, please subscribe, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye.